Hi, and welcome to this talking head video. In this video, I explore how I would learn PowerShell in 2025 if I were to start from scratch. So I know no PowerShell. This is how I would actually learn it in the year of 2025. And this is probably going to be a pretty applicable for next year. Um, or if you've already just started, this is probably going to be a really good video for you. So the first thing that I would actually really start with learning uh, PowerShell in 2025 is actually scratching PowerShell 5 altogether. I would start off with PowerShell 7 um, just because this is what's going to be used in the future and a lot of newer modules that work with Azure, Microsoft 365, uh, Entra ID, other cloud platforms, those modules all require PowerShell 7 anyways already. Um, so I would start off with that. And this way you can get used to programming in PowerShell and Visual Studio Code and not use the PowerShell ISC right from the get-go. I know it's a little bit more um, work to get that set up because you do have to usually install PowerShell 7 as it doesn't come installed on your OS already. And you need to configure Visual Studio Code. But that's where I segue into what I would recommend as a video series first. Um, now, sticking with just in my channel here, I actually have a lot of playlists. So um, what we can actually see here, and I'll be posting all the links to the playlist in the description down below. Uh, but where I would actually start off is the beginner PowerShell 7 tutorials. Now this will give you the fundamentals and everything else. So if we actually uh, just view the full playlist, you'll get the fundamentals, variables, how to use array and array lists, the hash tables and custom objects, go through the pipeline. You're also gonna go through conditional statements, loops, error catching with the try catch, and you're gonna go through different modules as well which those are all gonna be really good things to get used to right off the bat. And then I would then recommend the intermediate playlist with PowerShell 7, because that's gonna show you how to make your own methods or make your own functions, which will then help you make your own commandlets, which then you can make your own modules. And it's gonna go with things like PowerShell remoting and working with different types of files like CSV files, JSON, and XML files. Now, while you're working through these videos, what I would actually recommend doing as well, just to make sure you're not getting stuck in a tutorial hell, which a tutorial hell is basically where you're watching the videos and you can follow along with the videos, but once you go out on your own, you get kind of completely lost and you're not sure what to do. So to avoid that, is while you're going through the beginner and intermediate videos, I would actually try to automate some of your daily or weekly tasks, no matter how simple they might be. And maybe not automate them, but just use PowerShell to do them. So as an example, that would be very easy to do right off the bat, would be instead of logging on to a remote server to restart it, is actually use PowerShell to restart it or use PowerShell to perform your Windows updates or manipulate the file system like copying or deleting files or making some small registry changes. All of those are pretty easy to do with just a few lines and it'll make sure that you're just getting into that habit of doing it. Another thing that I would really recommend learning in terms of if you like to follow along with videos is learn the invoke rest method and invoke web request. These are going to be extremely helpful for you because these are going to let you manipulate APIs. And that's what's going to really let you get a lot further in your PowerShell programming or in your PowerShell career, or even your IT career in general, is starting to learn APIs because you're going to be able to interact with uh, Microsoft Graph. You're going to be able to interact with AWS or any other system a lot of systems these days, whether it be VMware, um, Hyper-V, Zoom, Teams, uh, Microsoft Graph, AWS, they all have APIs that you can interact with and that will make your life to be able to automate 
all sorts of different systems. They don't have to have a PowerShell module for you to interact with them. As long as you know how to interact with their APIs, you can manage a um, vast majority of different things. You can interact with Elastic at that point as well and tie in scripts uh, to pretty much any system you could really imagine as long as they have an API. Another thing that I would do if you are more in the style of books, uh, these are the books that I've personally used uh, recently as well. And a lot of these books are going to be for PowerShell 5, um, but these will easily translate to PowerShell 7 as the code will work. Um, which is learn Windows PowerShell in a month of lunches. So again, I'll put all these links in the description down below. This would probably be the one that I would start off with. And then the other two that I would easily recommend is going to be PowerShell for sysadmins workflow automation made easy. This is going to be a really, really good one, especially if you're working in IT and working as a system administrator. This will show you how you can use PowerShell to really automate your job and be able to manipulate Active Directory, uh, manipulate Azure, uh, printers, and a vast amount of different systems as well. And then the last one, which this one is actually directly PowerShell 7, and this is PowerShell 7 for IT professionals. Now this one, I would actually keep as your last book to read. If you are, again, if you are a book loaner, that's why I'm introducing videos and books depending on your learning style, um, just because this book will go a lot more in depth um, and it is a lot going to be related to IT work. So managing Active Directory, DNS, DHCP, Azure, AWS, printers. I believe it also covers Hyper-V in this one. I believe the PowerShell for system admins also covers Hyper-V as well. These are all really, really good books to basically learn PowerShell from scratch all the way through. Um, and then after you're done learning the real basics, so the videos will really cover the basics and then to really get you going, because any other programming language, PowerShell is the exact same. You're gonna learn the basics, but really at that point, it is going to be learning how to automate and how to script things on your own, which is why I recommend even starting that when you're going through those beginner intermediate uh, videos or if you're doing the learn windows powershell in a month of lunches every chapter or so or every two chapters is start to automate some of your daily tasks but also i have a video for eight powershell project ideas for beginners you can easily go through these ideas and try to make them on your own but what I also do have is I do have a playlist um, where I actually solve uh, these project ideas and I go through a lot of them. Um, so you can easily go through these videos as well if you end up getting stuck. But what I would actually do is just watch the idea video first and maybe do a little template of how you would solve the problem and try coding the problem. Then if you get stuck, then go reference the video to see what I do to solve that problem. But again, I would try to avoid watching the solution video before solving the problem yourself, or at least trying. This way you don't get stuck in that tutorial hell. That is really the biggest uh, key advice that I would give to learning anything, um, especially programming related or IT related. It is very easy to follow a video or follow a book along but if you're not automating your own tasks or your own projects, it is then very hard. After you've watched all the videos, you have all this information, you almost have too much information because then you don't know what to do with it. But if you're learning topic by topic and slowly building up your repertoire of scripts that you've written yourself and you know how they work, you will easily then go from writing scripts that are maybe two lines to five lines to then maybe 20 lines to then writing modules that are over a thousand lines. That is how I went about learning PowerShell a long time ago. And that's how I would still do it in 2025. But in 2025, I would start off with PowerShell 7. Whereas when I started, I learned, I started with PowerShell 3. And then 
uh, moved my way up. But today I would just start off with PowerShell 7. Skip all the other stuff. You don't need to know it. You will learn it with PowerShell 7. And the major thing to focus on are the key points, especially in the beginner videos or in the book of learn Windows PowerShell in a month of lunches. It is really the basics that you're going to really want to learn. You're going to want to learn variables. You're going to want to learn loops. You're going to want to learn conditional statements because that even that will carry over to other programming languages like C Sharp or Python, where you can automate even other different systems. Or sometimes a system might be easier to work with with a certain programming language. And PowerShell might not be always your solution, but PowerShell is a great language, in my opinion, to start because of its simplicity um, and its power to be able to automate tasks very easily. That is how I would learn PowerShell in 2025. If you guys have anything as well that you guys would like to let people know in the comment section, I would definitely recommend you guys to share those to other people. Another thing that I did actually forget to mention is don't be afraid to use ChatGPT or Copilot or Gemini or any AI system to generate some PowerShell code if you don't know where to start somewhere. Now, in my experience, when I've generated PowerShell code using ChatGPT or Copilot, Copilot, I've had a little bit more success, but the code usually will not work at 100% the first time you generate it, depending on what you're asking it to do and the complexity of the problem. But what that actually gives you is it gives you practice on learning how to read code and how to debug code as well. So don't be afraid to use those tools. They might feel like you're cheating, but you're actually going to be learning probably more in the long run because you're going to be starting off with code that might not actually work at 100% and you're going to have to figure it out on how to actually fix it. Maybe they just have a wrong commandlet. Maybe they have a parameter name wrong. But really what it'll give you, it'll give you the steps and the ideology that it used to design the script as well, which is what I really like. And then you can use that in future scripts to kind of break down a problem. And that is really it there. So like I said, if you guys have anything that you guys else uh, that you guys would like to recommend to beginners that are just starting to learn PowerShell or want to learn PowerShell in 2025, please let your comments in the comment section down below. And like I said, I'll be putting a link to all the different playlists and the books in the description of this video. And if you guys like this video, please subscribe, hit that like button. Also be sure to hit that notification bell to be notified when the next video comes out and I will see you guys on the next video.